Hello everybody and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. Today we're going to be taking a step back in time, back to when life was much simpler, back before pandemics. This was the Star Wars game you had to be playing. And of course I'm talking about the OG Battlefront 2. Some of you guys might not remember this game or might be too young for this game, but let me tell you, for its time, it was a work of art. And today we're going to be making the highest tier clone trooper from that game. That of course is the Jet Trooper. I'm going to be rolling some pretty bad gameplay of me testing this out. This was literally me playing it for the first time in probably 10 years, so uh, shaking off the rust a little bit. But this trooper was unique in that it had a jetpack and an EMP launcher that was basically a, a missile launcher. But it was the unit you had to work towards and is considered the top tier for the Republic. Now this helmet is also pretty relevant right now because, in case you had noticed, Disney released news of a whole slew of new shows including the show that we knew was coming, The Bad Batch. Now in the trailer for The Bad Batch, we actually see some glimpses of something that looks kind of like this Jet Trooper. We only get a few glimpses of it, but the most noticeable thing about this whole helmet is the green visor, and here we can see it in the new Bad Batch trailer. So, who knows, maybe we get to see this trooper make a comeback, see him with the jetpack and in the MP launcher. In the trailer he uses a flamethrower, but it kind of looks similar, but who knows? I'm really excited for that show. Should be a lot of new cool helmets to make from it, but today we're gonna be making the 501st Jet Trooper. So with all that said, let's get right into the build. Now the first step in the whole process is to 3D print the helmet itself. Now the model we're gonna be using is my generic phase two clone trooper helmet. Both the files and the prints are available at galacticarmory.net. Now while the helmet could be printed in one piece on my CR-10S printer, I like to cut up my helmet into three major pieces and print them all individually. If you guys need a tutorial on how to do that, I'll link it right now. But here we've got the face part. This part alone is gonna take over 40 hours to print, so we'll go ahead, add our supports, print it out, and then print out the other pieces as well. Now that we've got all the pieces printed, we're gonna to need to put it all together. Now the first thing I like to do for that is to sand down all the edges so that they fit together better, and so that there's less of a gap in between the parts. Once I have all the edges sanded, I'm gonna use some cyanoacrylate super glue to hold the pieces together. Now the super glue takes about 30 seconds to a minute to really get a hold on, so what I like to do is use an old soldering iron to actually kind of weld the interior pieces together that will join the pieces a lot faster and provide a solid hold for you while the glue cures. Now you want to be careful that your pieces are aligned as perfectly as possible. You don't want them to be misaligned otherwise it'll create a lot of work for us down the road. Now that we've got all the pieces assembled we can work on smoothing out the 3D printer lines. Now the primary product we're going to be using to fill in the 3D printer lines is Bondo Glazing and Spot Putty. What the stuff is is it's basically a cream that when it is exposed to air over the course of several hours, it will gradually harden to a material that is sandable. And ideally, once we sand over it, the surface will be smooth and ready for painting. What I'm going to do is apply Bondo all over the entire helmet. That'll give us a good smooth base to start with, and we'll get about 80 to 90% of the 3D printer lines on the first go. I had a little fun putting the Bondo on this helmet. I made a little handprint on the face. I think it would make a cool, maybe custom helmet down the road sometime but we're gonna finish up applying Bondo all over the surface to get ready for sanding. Now while applying this, you wanna make sure and do this in a well-ventilated area, have a window open, and wear a respirator for it. Cause this stuff does kind of smell, and since you have to let it harden for like six hours, you have to leave it somewhere, and it's gonna smell. So be safe, be smart, and plan out where you're gonna do it beforehand. Now that the Bondo is cured, we can start sanding. And the first thing I like to do is go over it with a mouse sander with about a 120 grit pad of sandpaper. Now what this mouse sander is gonna do is gonna take off a lot of the high areas, it's gonna save our shoulder from hand sanding a lot, and it's gonna save us a lot of time as well. Be sure and wear a respirator for this part as well because it's gonna throw up a lot of Bondo dust and you definitely don't wanna be breathing that. Go over as much of the helmet as you can and then we'll switch over to hand sanding. Now hand sanding is pretty straightforward. I grab a little rectangle of 120 grit sandpaper and just start sanding all the areas that the mouse sander missed along with some of the detail areas that need a little bit more attention. This is pretty straightforward. Just go around the entire helmet until you've sanded all the Bondo as smooth as you can get it. Now the next product I like to use is called Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 Filler and Sandable. And what this stuff is, is it's basically a thick spray paint that's gonna fill in the rest of the areas that the Bondo couldn't. Some of the details around the mouth, the ears, all those little hard to reach places that you couldn't reach with Bondo, we're gonna use this filler primer stuff to fill in those 3D printer lines. It's also really good at filling in all the deep scratches in the Bondo that you might have been 
a little bit overzealous with your hand sanding or your mouse sanding, it's gonna give us a nice smooth surface, even more so than the Bondo. And since it's an aerosol, it can get into all those hard to reach spots. I'll generally do two to three coats of this stuff, waiting about 20 minutes in between each coat. Leave it to dry for a couple hours, and then we can sand again. Yeah, you heard me right, we're going back to sanding. This time with a higher grit sandpaper, it's gonna give the surface of the helmet an even smoother feeling. We're going up to 320 grit, using a sanding sponge, just going all around the helmet, getting every single piece in detail, and using a microfiber cloth to clean off the dust. This is kind of the final stage before we start painting, so make sure you have all the details covered that you want to, Make sure that no 3D printer lines are visible. And if you need to add more Bondo or more filler primer, that's perfectly fine too. But once the helmet is fully smoothed at 320 grit, we're gonna be ready for painting. Now the first step in painting is pretty simple. We're gonna be using an ultra matte white as our base coat. Be sure and apply it in light coats. I generally do two to three light coats to get a full covering. But we're just gonna cover the entire helmet in this white to begin with, and then we can start adding the other color. Now before we start adding the blue, we're gonna need to tape off the area so that we don't get the paint anywhere we don't want to. Now the design used for the Jet Trooper is pretty similar to the base 501st Trooper, where it goes all the way down the face in a V shape, and then around the backside and cuts off before it hits the, uh, the back rim. So I'm just gonna tape out those shapes, trying as hard as I can to keep it symmetrical, it's a little bit of a guess and check kind of deal, but it works. Once the tape is down, before we start painting, we're gonna do something that'll give the helmet a little bit more life. And that's gonna be using a bit of liquid latex to give us the chipped paint look effect of a helmet that's been through a lot of battle. The stuff comes as a liquid, so we're gonna be using a cotton swab to apply it, and after about an hour or so, it will turn into a like a latex, you know, like a balloon texture. Then, once we paint the helmet, we'll be able to rub off the liquid latex revealing the white paint underneath, and it's gonna give us the look for the impression that paint was chipped off, either from wear or from battle, something like that. Now I kinda like to pinch the, the end of the cotton swab to a point so that I have greater control when applying the liquid latex. Otherwise, I feel like the corners and the edges are too rounded. With a pointed cotton swab tip, I'm able to add some sharp points and turns and all that sort of fun detail so that the chipped paint looks a bit more realistic. Let the latex dry and then we'll be able to paint it blue. Sorry about the potato quality, but the blue I used here is a Rust-Oleum Brilliant Blue. Again, just do some light coats and make sure that you have total coverage of the taped off area. So now we get to have some fun peeling off the tape, revealing our blue design underneath. This is pretty straightforward, just don't peel the tape off too hard. You don't want to accidentally lift up some of the white paint underneath. Now that we've got all the tape off, we can start to peel off the liquid latex, and I can show you guys what I meant earlier. So you can kind of see how the texture differs from the rest of the blue, so it should be easy to find, but I just rub it off with my finger, and you could see the chipped paint effect that we were going for. Try not to overdo it, I just did it in a few different spots, but I think less is more in this case. Now the rest of the colors of the helmet are pretty much the same thing. I'll tape off the area that I need, paint it, and then peel off the tape. For the black around the uh, the brim of the helmet and the cheeks, I used a Rust-Oleum flat black. And for the gray of the mouthpieces, I actually used the filler primer that we used earlier. Okay, so now the helmet is really starting to take shape. It's starting to look like something that resembles the Jet Trooper. Now we're gonna be doing a bit of weathering. And for that, I'm gonna be using some black paint inside of an airbrush. This is a pretty simple technique. I just used the black paint to kind of cover the entire helmet in a light dust coat. That's gonna give it the impression of general wear and a little bit of dirt. But then I'm gonna apply a heavier coat to the creases and the recessed areas of the helmet where dirt would naturally accumulate. That's gonna give it a really realistic look and add a lot to the character of the helmet. Like the liquid latex earlier, you can definitely overdo it here. So, so restrain yourself, don't go too overboard with the weathering, and remember that less is more. Now that we've got the helmet fully painted, we can finally get to work on that iconic green visor. Now it took me a few tries to get this visor just right, but I think I found the right color. I tried ordering a visor that was defaulted to the green color I was looking for, but none of the options I found were shiny or reflective enough. So what I settled on was some green reflective window tint, and I'm gonna be applying that over a clear grinding shield. Now I'm just gonna put the window tint over the entire grinding shield and then cut out the shape that we need for the visor. I really wish that the window tint had its sticky side on the back side, but instead it's the green side that is actually the sticky side. So what you see is the green window tint behind the clear visor instead of in front of it. This caused some problems for me down the road that I'll explain later. After I'd pushed out all the air bubbles with a credit card or something like that, 
I can cut out the visor and we can start fixating it to the inside of the helmet. For that, I like to use a two-part epoxy putty called Steel Stick. It's a two-part putty that you mix together and after a few minutes, it will harden to like a rock-like texture. So it's really good at holding down visors inside of 3D printed helmet. The putty actually kind of works itself in between the printer lines that are still unfilled on the inside. So it has a pretty good hold. After putting the putty in about four places around the visor, it should be held in place strongly enough. So the final part of this helmet is going to be the mesh behind the mouthpieces so that people can't actually look inside and see your mouth. For that, we're gonna be using some mosquito netting from a mosquito head net. We're gonna layer it over itself like three or four times. And what you're gonna get is a cool looking mesh material that isn't easily seen through. We're gonna affix it to the inside of the helmet just with basic hot glue. The hot glue seeps through the mesh pretty easily, so it's not too difficult to get a solid connection. Just be sure that your mesh is wide enough so that it covers all the teeth gaps and tall enough so that it can handle the curve of the teeth. It's at this point where I started to have my problems with the visor. Since the window tint is affixed to the back side, when we curve the visor, it actually kind of lifts part of the visor up over time. It's the same length as it was, but since it's bent backwards, it's covering a shorter distance, so it starts to fold in on itself. I tried to fill in those air bubbles as best as I could, but they just kept coming back since the curvature of the visor was pretty unforgiving. If I had to do it again, I might try like curving the visor beforehand before I apply the window tint, but maybe that's for next time. Maybe that's for when I try the animated version that we saw in the Bad Batch trailer. I actually lied to you guys a little bit. There's one more step that I forgot, and that is the tube stripes on both sides of the cheeks. Now I got these tube stripes. They're like just little vinyl stickers. I got them from Trooper Bay. He does a whole lot of this stuff. And it's actually the same tube stripes that I used back on my Coruscant Guard Officer. So if you're looking for some easy tube stripes, go check out his shop. They're pretty easy to stick on, but you just have to be sure to keep them evenly spaced and fit to the correct area. So that's why I brought my old Coruscant Guard Trooper helmet as kind of a reference. So how about that guys? We brought something from our past to real life. And for me, that is just such a cool feeling. I loved this game growing up played it so much and to have the ability to make stuff like this now it's just incredible if i would have told younger me that this was possible shown him the stuff that i'm making now his head would have exploded and i hope you guys get the same satisfaction and enjoyment out of making these helmets as i do a lot of you guys have messaged me saying that i inspired you to start making your own helmets and that's just really fulfilling for me as well. So thank you all for the kind messages. I've got a lot of new stuff planned for the future, including some more stuff from The Mandalorian. So look forward to that. Until then, I hope to see you guys again in the next video.